Hi, this is Joe again with another movie review. And for a certain, on this video, we're going to be doing another uh, movie from the, from the 80s. And that's the 1988 film uh, Coming to America. It was one stars Annie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, uh, James Earl Jones, Morris Sinclair, uh, Sherry Henley, and Eric LaSalle. Because this movie was really a, a silly comedy, and with Amy Murphy starring as an African prince in a small African country, and he's about to have get married, and he's not thrilled with the uh, bride that his parents picked for him. <coughs> and his parents picked the bride, and he's going to marry, and he's you know he's going to be stuck stuck with this girl. So he decides to. Go somewhere else to look, to look for a bride and bring her back home to his country. And, and it doesn't say which which African country and what. I think I think they did. Um, one, one of those small cheesy uh, African countries. Uh, so so the, so uh, he decides to go to get find an American girl. So of course he looks at the United States. So, oh, where's the perfect place in the United States to find a girl? And he goes, looks in New, in New York, in New York City, and specifically Queens. I mean, apparently, Queens, New York holds the monopoly of finding future Queens. And which is a, kind of like a really, you know, kind of like a silly premise. And, and, and what is a silly premise? And the thing is, is that you also have, like, apparently, you couldn't get enough actors to be in this movie. Because both Annie Murphy and Sidney Hall play multiple characters in this film. There's one particular character with with, Annie, with uh, a Sidney Hall wearing a dress in a nightclub, and also in the Marvel show we have both Annie Murphy and I think play like two or three different characters, including an old white Jewish guy, which is a stereotypical uh, Jewish accent and. Make you know, you really couldn't tell with Eddie Murphy. I mean, seriously. Uh, and you also had Sidney Hall also playing multiple characters in, a, in that barber shop as well. And of course, they, they go to like a community uh, center in this particular area in Queens, which is, looks like a dumpy area. But actually, I think it was actually filmed most of it was on the, in, in Elmhurst, Queen, in the Elmhurst section of Queens, not too far from where I live. And the reason why I know this is because they had. Filming there like for weeks and a couple of months actually. And this one particular, what well, was at the time of Wendy's, and they reconfigured it. And well, they reconfigured the, the building itself, but they repainted the uh, the sign, and they put a big M on on the window, kind of like a McDonald's M, you know, the golden arches, but the main more, really more of a rounded M. And they renamed the McDowell's. I figured, what the hell is McDowell's? And, and then I realized, because I used to go past this went particularly when he's on my way to uh, high school. I was in high school at the time, and I go, will go by this particular Wendy's, which was on Queen's Boulevard in Amherst, New in Amherst Queens. But fortunately, the building is not there anymore. It's been torn now. There also was a round circular building, which, which was a bank. Uh, unfortunately, that building has been torn down as well. So those two buildings are not there anymore, uh, unfortunately. But it was but it was actually a Wendy's, and they renamed the McDowell's for the movie, and they used the name McDowell's. And there was one there's what there was one or two controversies with this movie. Uh, I'm going to get I'm going to get to them towards the end of the video if I have time for it. Uh, because they use the name McDowell's and kind of, and they kind of like spoofing McDonald's. Uh, in this film, but of course, as soon as uh, Amy Murphy starts working there, he starts to fall in love with the owner's daughter, played by Sherry Henley. Who I think she was also, and I don't say sure in this, but I think she was also a model at that time. And she also appeared on the on one episode of the television show Matlock, which in fact she actually played the model or a fashion model, and she also appeared as a regular. Or on the ABC soap opera, All My Children. Uh, 
Unfortunately, she, she lasted for a couple of years and then she, she eventually left and then she came back after a few years and then she left again. Uh, that's who Sherry Henley uh, is, is an actress. I don't know what the hell she's doing now, but she was, she was famous for being on Coming to America and All My Children. And the one that was on Matlock. And instantly she followed, uh, Sherry Henley was kind of like a little curious about the Eddie Murphy character. And a city, uh, well, I should also tell you that at City Hall, who was Eddie Murphy's real, real life best friend, played his friend in in this movie, Coming to America, and he goes with Eddie Murphy on his, you know, eventually trying to find a girl, trying to advise him on what he should do, and how she, how she picked up, find a, find a new vine and everything. Uh, so. So, like, like I said, he falls. Amy Murphy gets an instant attraction to the Sherry Henley character, and she kind of likes him. She, th she, uh, she thinks Amy Murphy was kind of cute uh, in the movie, and of course, by that time, the Sherry Henley's character was actually dating Eric Lassell. And of course, later on, like about six years later, stars in the. Famous television show Eeyore played Dr. Peter Ben. So this was before he was in Eeyore and he was using the stupid spray glue, spray glue or something with his afro and, and his family was like sitting on a, chair, on a couch and they all get up and they had like a, a stain on, on, on the wall behind them. All this crap like put in their hair. It was a you know, pretty funny scene and those type of scenes were like th throughout this, this movie. Uh, and of course, he had all the stuff. With, he, he did have in the movie stuff with McDonald's trying to get in the Swinney's because a few blocks down on Queens Boulevard, where the Swinney's was, uh, there's one particular scene where the guy photographing the, the the fast food joint, and he runs down Queens Boulevard. That's the direction of the where the McDonald's is on Queens Boulevard, and the McDonald's is still there. And as a matter of fact, there was a. Uh, there was also a Kentucky Fried Chicken in the area as well, but the Kentucky Fried Chicken is not there anymore. At least not at least not in that location, and the Wendy's is not there anymore. So the only fast food joint is still in that particular area was the McDonald's. Because there was also a Burger King, and then for some reason that Burger King closed, and, and they tore down that building, and it's now a it's now a uh, and now it's now it's like a bank now. But you had all these uh, fast food joints so all in the same, within walking distance of one another. Uh, you know, went off on a tangent there, but going back to the movie, uh, that's here, of course, uh, they found out, on the parents found out, playing by Morris Sinclair and James Earl Jones, find out where the, where the hell is the son at, and they f figure out, they find out that the kid, that Eddie Murphy went to America, they went to Queens, New York, and they tracked, they stopped, they stopped, only in the movie, um, only in the movie like this, they tracked him down to Queens, and they found out that they, that their son, Wayne Murphy, was dating Sherry Henley's daughter, and when the father was played by John Amos, I, I haven't mentioned that John Amos plays the fa Sherry Henley's father, and when he finds out that Andy Murphy was dating, starting to date his daughter, was actually a prince in the country, he he goes crazy. Tries to suck up to James Earl Jones and uh, character, of course, that's been where any movie parents and they wouldn't have anything to do with it because they know that, that he was sucking up to him. And of course, when uh, Sherry Henley finds out that any movie was a prince, she was pissed off. So, hey, how come you never told me who you were? And he says, oh, and any movie says, look, I want you to like me for, for me, not because of and this prince. And of course, you find, and then of course, naturally, of course, everything does have to work out in the end. They like, long story short, and of course, they do end up getting married at the end of this movie. And and he act, he actually, do you like all this pop? I thought you, I thought you know why I have all this pop circumstance. I thought you hate it. He goes nah. <laughs> and, you know, in the end, in the film, and of course, like I said, everything does work out at the end of this film. And you know, it, it's not the greatest movie in the world. I'm not gonna say that, but it is to me entertaining enough because it was filmed in the area of Queens. I know, like I said before, and I knew when the that Wendy's was, you know, in the area where it was filmed. 
Uh, so it's kind of enjoyable to see, to see you know, that part of Queens in this movie, even though it does look like a slum area. Uh, you know, in the film, especially in the area of the apartment where Eddie Murphy and the senior hall stay in, in, in Queens. But all in all, it, it is a, a likable movie, it is an enjoyable film. Uh, that, like, I said, like I said, there's plenty of plot holes to figure out in this thing, and it's too silly. And Eddie Murphy and the Sydney Hall played one too many characters in this film, and they had other actors playing those parts instead of themselves playing those parts. And I'm not getting the talent, and I'm not getting the, you know, the makeup people who who made Eddie Murphy look like a, a, a white, an old white Jewish guy. Um, that can be a little bit offensive if you see it one too many. If you, if you see this movie one too many times, it becomes, it will become offensive. That, you know, with Eddie Murphy playing that type of character, plus all the other characters in the barber shop, Eddie Murphy, both Eddie Murphy and Sidney Hall, it does kind of become annoying, become stereotypical. Uh, but but uh, other than that, it is you know a stereotypical enjoyable film for that for that time in the eighties. Uh, but now, now I ran through the movie because I went against the controversies with this film. Uh, one of them I only kind of touched on was with McDonald's actually sued. Uh, with one, one or two corporate, two, well, I don't know if we call McDonald's a person, but, but McDonald's sued as a corporation. Uh, Amy Murphy in the City Hall and, and the film, and pa I think Paramount Studios made, made the film. Because of the spoofing of McDonald's, and of course, there's one particular scene where John Amos says, "Look, they're the going arches, and I'm the going M's." You know, you know, so, you know, make make you find McDonald's and uh, kind of like stealing the M a little bit. It is a different sheep M than the M that McDonald, the type of M that McDonald's uses, but you can tell it's a spoof of a spoof of McDonald's, and they're making fun of McDonald's in this film. And Jonas explains, you know, that he has exactly the same type of burgers as McDonald's sells and all that type of thing. So it's really kind of like a spoof or a knockoff of it, of McDonald's in this film. Uh, but McDonald's did make a huge, you know, sneak about. It. And the other controversy with this film was actually there was a guy who actually wrote the actual script. It's an original story of coming to America. I think it was under a different name uh, than the name that was actually used for the film. But he sued a sin uh, Amy Murphy because he wrote, wrote the story, and one was a city of Hall because both of them, even though Amy Murphy got the credit, got the credit for writing the story, uh, both of them ended up getting sued. Uh, I think it's more Amy Murphy got sued than Sidney Hall did, but I can't remember that both of them got sued. And Annie Murphy actually sell a uh, court because it was found there, there was enough evidence there to say that Annie Murphy stole the script. Uh, so he had to sell sell a court for it, and and of course they never made another sequel sequel of Coming to America. They, they never really did. They never really let's say when they come back to America and all that stuff uh, because because of this lawsuit. Because they don't want to make a second movie because otherwise they're going to have to pay this guy warranties and they don't want to do that uh, for the original story. But I do remember, like, uh, most recently they did have uh, a, a new reboot of the Asenia Hall show and Annie Murphy came on the show. I think that hyped another, another movie he did. And Asenia Hall said, well, I don't know, because people were always asking him over the years. How come they don't never made another a sequel to Coming to America? Was Amy Murphy explain why? It's because of this lawsuit. Because I don't know if you remember, but, but, but we were sued. There was a lawsuit involved because of the movie. I had to pay the guy uh, a sued uh, a few million dollars because of the allegation. It was proven that we you know stole the story and all that stuff. So. Uh, that's why we never made a sequel to to the film. And Sydney Hall goes, "Oh, I mean, come on, come on!" Sydney Hall didn't know didn't, didn't know the reason why there was never a sequel. 
I mean, come. I mean, come on. I mean, who? I mean, who's Kenny Ho here? I mean, the guy was directly. I mean, Sidney Hall was directly involved with this movie when he stole in so many different characters, and that's like Eddie Murphy did. And he didn't know there was a lawsuit. I mean, it, that thing dragged out for a couple of years, and he and he didn't he didn't know about it. I mean, I can understand people come up to him and asking him, "Hey, hey, how come the, how come there was never a sequel to Coming to America?" And he could have easily said, "Oh, because because we, we were sued for the story, and because of that, and all the hanging was going on about it. That's why that's why we never had a second film." Oh, uh, but but the movie was kind of it's kind of like a a silly comedy movie, and, and it was it was kind of really silly, especially in the beginning in the uh, beginning of the film, uh, especially in the part where Eddie Murphy's character couldn't do everything by himself. That's why he got tired of it. That's why he ran on his own to, to find his own ride. And especially because he had uh, a guy brushing his own, brushing his teeth. You had girls bathing him. And there's one particular sequence where he's in, you know, in this tub, in this big big tub, and a girl pops up from from underneath the water. She says, "Oh, the royal penis has now been is now clean, your highness." I mean, stuff like I mean, stuff like that. I mean, that's what really over the top silliness. And uh, plus, and then, and then, of course, when you get to when Amy Murphy and Sidney Hall come to the United States, then uh, the mood changes a little bit. And, and it was still a comedy, but the silliness it went, it went from a really, really silly comedy to a pretty decent comedy after that. Especially when it comes, when it comes to when it comes to a basic late '80s New York comedy film. Because especially all the violence that's been going on, and the crappy neighborhood they were in, and all, and all that stuff. Um, that that part of the film worked, worked for me, but not, you know, all the stuff when they were in Africa and the, and the palace and all that stuff. I mean, it was just over the top silliness. And that kind of took me off a little bit. And said, I said, come on, let's get the story. To me, it was like, get, let's go on, let's go, let's get the story. Uh, story when they're actually in America, um, and when they come over going to Queens, I mean, I thought that was also uh, beyond silliness as well. But as an overall film, and what like I, like I said a couple times already, it is an enjoyable movie. And it's not it's not the greatest movie you ever saw, but it's like if you want to kill two hours, you go watch Coming to America, and it's one of the few movies in the late '80s that any movie actually did with actually can't kind of have decent uh, it's not, like, like I said it's not the greatest film but, but at least it was a decent film compared to a lot of any Murphy movies especially post Beverly Hills Cop uh, one of the few decent films he did it was not a Beverly Hills Cop movie or another 48 hours film but, one, but there is one bit I, sh I should I should mention this one this one cameo, and it's one spoof of one of Eddie Murphy's previous films. Uh, there was one particular movie w scene where after they come to America and aim and they have all this money on on Ace of City Hall, all this money on with them, and Eddie Murphy says, "Look, I don't want all this stinking money." So he throws the money out the window and to this dumpster, and come popping out of the dumpster, having the rough Bellamy. And uh, Don Amici. Now, can you know who those two actors are? They happen to be in the one of the first and the first movie that Eddie Murphy did for Train Places. And they've been home, like, I guess, like homeless ever since. From the, what happened in the end of Train Places to this movie, they popped up and said, Hey, we're back. And because they found, they happened to find this money that Eddie Murphy threw out the car window. And he said, Hey, we're back. I thought that was a great spoof to bring these two guys, these two actors back, and I thought that was the best cameo of this whole film. So that's my review of the uh, movie Coming to America. Please click on the video, please read it. Uh, please feel free to comment on it. Please subscribe to my channel, and please forward this video onto your Facebook pages. And also, you can check out all my videos on my 
not only on my YouTube channel, but you can also go to uh, rallyc.com. That's all on WDY, the letter C.com. You can check out a uh, good chunk of my, my reviews on that website as well. Thanks, for, and you also can check out all the other content as well on Rally C, including the Rally Review and the TV Trash, uh, Pino Pizza Guy, and plus all the other content on Chris Moore's website, which is once again, rallyc.com. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.